Hello again, everybody, and welcome back. So far, this chapter in chapter 10, we've been talking about um, rotational motion, rotational kinematics, and objects spinning around uh, on an axis. In many cases, that axis is stationary, like, say, the center of a record uh, turntable or something like that, or possibly a CD or, or a wheel. But, uh, but actually, uh, now that I mentioned wheels, um, think about it. Do wheels stay stationary? No, they actually move. The reason most wheels on cars turn is to actually propel the car forward. So what we're going to be ha dealing with now is what we call rolling motion. And that is the rotational kinematics involved in an object uh, rotating around its center of rotation or axis of rotation, but also the fact that the object in doing so is going to be propelled forward in a straight line. Rotational motion is what we've been talking about. And linear motion, sometimes called translational motion, T-R-A-N-S, translational. Um, I prefer linear myself just because um, if, I, if we talk about different kinds of motion and energy in the future, I, like, I prefer to have a, uh, a subscript L rather than T. Um, we'll talk about that, uh, that, that later. But anyway, um, so this object right here, this, this wheel, Unlike a record player or unlike a CD that just sits there and spins, this not only spins but also moves forward. So we have angular velocity, but we also have linear velocity right here. If you consider a wheel, what part of it is, um, is doing the rotating? Well, it's every part of it except for the very, very center, right? And so if we were to take a point right here, by the way, this, this wheel is supposed, to, from here to here, is supposed to represent one revolution, all right? So if we were to take this wheel and put a red dot right there at the top, and therefore one revolution later, it would be uh, exactly the same point. What would happen to that, that red dot? It's going to be certainly um, rotating uh, around the center of the, uh, the axis of rotation right there, but also it's going to be moving forward. So halfway between here... And here, the red dot should be on the ground, that is, on, on uh, the part of the wheel that is on the ground. So this red dot, we can kind of <coughs> um, predict, is going to be making sort of a loopy motion, sort of like that, as the wheel moves forward. What this means for us is that objects at the top of the wheel... Um, are going to be moving faster with respect to the ground because the whole wheel is moving forward and the, the, the dot, that is that part of the wheel, is moving forward. Objects at the bottom of the, of the wheel in contact with the ground, assuming it's not slipping, that is, uh, if, if the wheel is slipping, it means like you're skidding or doing a burnout maybe or something like that, but if the wheel is in constant contact with the ground, there's no motion between the, the wheel and the ground right here because the wheel is sort of in constant contact with it. So an object at the top is going to do this kind of loopy motion right here. Um, the only object, the only part of the wheel that has a constant velocity is the axis of rotation right here. And even that is, if you think of it as in like an axle, I mean, the axle is kind of rotating around itself, but the very, very center of that axle right there, the axis of rotation has a constant velocity forward because it's not moving around anything, because it is the axis, it is the center of that rotation right there. I'd like to show you real quick a, um, a little video that I put together, a few seconds long, honestly. But um, this is, so I have, uh, a wheel is going to show up, all right, and this little red, um, not red, this little blue dot right here, it's like a little, well, it's like a little light emitter that I'm going to, that I'm going to have going around this wheel. All right, so just keep your eye on that, all right, and see what happens to the path of that little light emitter as the wheel moves forward. Let's see now if I can get this thing to start. Okay, here we go. All right. So we have that little light emitter at, the, at, at one point on the wheel right there, and as the wheel <coughs> moves around in a circle, See if I can get this to repeat. There we go. Um, the light emitter rotates around the axis of rotation. All right. Um, but also, since the wheel is moving forward, let me back this up a little bit. You'll see that when it's moving at the top right there, it's moving very fast, as indicated by that 
I won't say very fast, but I mean it's moving faster than the rest of the wheel because the wheel, the top of the wheel is moving forward and the wheel itself is moving forward. Down at the bottom right there, it makes it really sharp little loop. And you notice that loop is in kind of constant contact with the ground. It's not moving at all. And that's what happens when wheels touch the ground. They don't want to skid across the ground. And so it makes that little sharp direction change as the wheel moves forward and then the, the, the little light emitter is pulled up again. So that kind of um, fast at the, at the top, slow at the bottom, fast at the top, slow at the bottom is very typical of, um, of parts of a wheel that are both rotating but also that have linear um, kinematics as well. The reason for that is because, well, if you look at rotational motion, um, at the very top of a wheel, say right here, the velocity of an object the linear velocity of the, of the object that we've, and we've talked about this, is um, we define that as the radius times the rotational um, or the angular velocity. Radius times omega. Okay, well, and it's the same velocity at the bottom right here. Or well, I should say the same magnitude of velocity at the bottom as it is at the top, but it's in the opposite direction. All right, so we're going the uh, parts of the wheel that are Let's just think of that as being like a, a wheel that is stationary, all right? It's, it's just spinning and somebody's holding the center right there. The objects at the bottom of the wheel are moving backwards, or I should say in the, um, uh, towards, the, um, towards the left. But the magnitude is the same as that of the top wheel. The radius times the angular velocity, omega. All right, but if the wheel is touching the ground and it is propelling itself forward because of its rotational motion, now we have translational motion, or I, I want to say linear, linear motion, because the whole wheel is moving towards the right. The center, the axis of rotation, is moving towards the right. The bottom is, and the top is, as well. So if we put these two velocities together, look at the top right here. The top, we've got velocity, all right, the radius times the uh, angular velocity due to rolling motion, plus velocity due to, trans to uh, linear motion. The center right here, it only has velocity due to linear motion. Here it doesn't have any rotational motion at all, right, because the center is the center. It's zero distance from the center. <laughs> it has zero radius. In the bottom right here, the velocity is moving towards the right because of linear motion, but it's moving towards the left because of rotational motion. So if we add up all those together, that means the velocity at the top, T-O-P, is going to be two times R-W. That is, our, uh, oh, I said W, sorry, radius times uh, omega. All right, two times radius times uh, the angular velocity. The center of the wheel is going to be radius times angular velocity. And at the bottom, at least with respect to the ground, the velocity is going to be zero because it's not skidding past the ground. It is uh, rolling over it. And so um, that's why we oftentimes say without slipping. That is, it's moving at the same rate that the ground is. So as the ground is moving underneath the wheel, the wheel is coming down and contacting it and moving uh, and, and rolling up off the ground at the same rate. Now, if we talk about any wheel having a velocity, um, that is, a, a wheel being attached to a car, something like that, the velocity that we really care about is going to be this velocity right here, radius times the angular velocity. Because this axle right here, or this axis of rotation, is attached to the car and is moving at the same rate as the rest of the car is. It just so happens that the top of the wheel if you ever watched a car and then the wheel moving, um, the top of the wheel is moving forward and the bottom of the wheel uh, moving backwards. They don't really represent the uh, true velocity of the car. The true velocity of the car is indicated by the center of that wheel right there. And that is simply radius times um, angular velocity. Okay? So this AOR right here, this axis of rotation, that's the only part of the wheel that experiences real linear motion. And this is, like I said before, this is the true velocity of the car. The bottom, with respect to the ground, is at rest. 
Now, it's not at, at rest with respect to the rest of the wheel. It is rotating around the rest of the wheel, but it is not skidding past the ground, and so it's at rest with the ground. As fast as your car is moving, as long as your wheels aren't skidding, when the wheels contact the ground, they are at rest with the ground for that brief second before they're, they're lifted back up again. So the velocity at the bottom is zero, but since the top is not only moving forward linearly, but is also rotating forward, then that means we have two times the velocity that you would have at the axis of rotation, or two times the radius times the angular velocity. So, here's our wheel right here. This right here, the axis of rotation, the velocity, the axis of rotation, AOR, I'm not going to write that all the time, but the AOR, that is the true velocity of the wheel. This velocity with respect to ground, I'm not going to write it that way either, but uh, is zero. And this velocity with respect to the ground is actually two times the velocity of the axis of rotation because it's moving forward. A O R two times the velocity of the axis of rotation. But this right here is the is the big one that we that we want to mostly be concerned about, especially if we're talking about a wheel that is moving forward. This is the true velocity, the true linear velocity of that wheel. And then from that we can figure out what the velocity of the, the, the top part of the wheel or the bottom part of the wheel is with respect to the ground moving forward. Let's go ahead and do example 1010 and then we'll call it a wrap for uh, this segment. So what is the angular speed of your tires in RPM? Okay, right away, what is our angular speed? That's what we want to find out. And we want that to be in RPM. M, right? I'll just write that as a little reminder right there. Assuming you are driving 24.5 meters per second. Okay, you are driving 24.5 meters per second. First of all, we don't care about miles per hour because that's English units. But 24.5 meters per second, that is our velocity. It's the velocity of the car. Velocity of the car, which is equal to the velocity of the axis of rotation. That's really the velocity of the center of the wheel right there. All right, and that is 24, I messed that 4 up, didn't I? And the 2 up, 24.5 meters per second. Okay, and the radius of our tires uh, is how many centimeters? 32 centimeters. Radius equals 32 centimeters, which equals 0 0.32 meters. Okay, so our... Wheel is, uh, I'll just draw a wheel. I should probably use black, shouldn't I? Okay. So, what we will, this is the velocity of the whole car, which is the same thing as the velocity of the axis of rotation, the center of that, um, of the axle, you might say. Okay. That is uh, 24.5 meters per second. We want to find the angular velocity right there. All right. Um, now, the, the velocity at the top of the wheel is two times that of the axis of rotation, and the velocity at the bottom of the wheel is zero times that of the axis of rotation, at least with respect to the ground. Um, but uh, we know how to take our um, axis, our, I'm sorry, our velocity, our linear velocity, and turn it into a rotational velocity. A, ro a rotational velocity is going to be the velocity divided by the radius. All right, the velocity of what part? Of the axis of rotation, which is the velocity of the whole car, divided by the radius. So what is that? Well, that's 24.5 meters per second divided by 0 0.32 meters. And that'll give us our answer in radians per second. Now, I'm going to have to convert that, but we'll just get radians per second first. Okay, and I get 76.6 radians per second. I should have left more room for myself, all right? That's great, but we want it in um, RPM, right? So let's just do a little conversion right here. 76.6 radians per second. I think I'm still going to run out of room, but that's okay. Um, 2 pi radians, right, equals 1 revolution, 
and uh, 60 seconds equals one minute. So radians cancels out, seconds cancels out, and we have an answer in revolutions per minute. All we need to do now is simply crunch our numbers. So 76.6 times 60 divided by 2 pi, and that would be 731 revolutions per minute, or RPM. And that is our rotational velocity, or our angular velocity, our angular speed of, um, of our tires, which means every part of that tire is rotating at that rate right there. But the question is, what is the linear speed at, now at, at the tops of our tires? At the tops of the tires. Well, remember that not only is our wheel moving, sorry, not only is it rotating, Okay, um, so it's got a velocity there and a velocity there, but it's also moving forward. So that means that, that um, those velocities plus our linear velocities moving forward, moving forward, moving forward all at that same rate. At the top right here, it's got a forward motion and a fo forward rotational motion. So as you remember, hopefully, uh, from the previous slide, that means at the top of the, the, top of the wheel, the, um, the linear speed, that's our, so that's our velocity, the axis of rota rotation. The velocity at the top of the wheel is two times the velocity of the axis. Oops, I wrote an X in there. A-O-R axis of rotation, all right, because the top of the wheel is moving forward faster than the, at least with respect to the ground, faster than the, the rest of the wheel is. So this should be easy, but we have the linear speed of the whole car, that is 24.5 meters per second. The tops of the tires is simply two times that, so two, oops, two times the velocity of the axis of rotation is two times 24.5, and I may be able to do that in my head, I'm going to say that's 49 meters per second. And that is a linear speed to the tops of your tires. So that's a little bit about not just rotational motion, but also linear motion as well. And we're going to, as we move forward, we're going to um, uh, do some more examples like that uh, involving those, those two types of motion, linear speed, linear motion, and rotational motion. But that's it for now. Thanks for following along. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me. But in the meantime, thanks for following along, and I'll see you on the next one.